and welcome back. I'm Avi, and this is the opera channel that I run. Yes, and once again, we will move on because that's always the hardest part. So for those who are new here, I'm Avi, and I am a soon-to-be recent graduate of the Royal Academy of Music. Now, um, I get asked a lot about questions about the Academy and life at the Academy, and um, I thought, why not answer it in this way, by asking you the questions specifically that you want to know about picking the right school for you. As a quick background, I dropped out of school twice, so I then took six years to finish my bachelor's, which in the grand scheme of things probably doesn't seem like a lot of time for some other people, but to me that was really difficult, especially because I always knew what I wanted and where I wanted to be, and I kind of had to keep starting and stopping the process of like getting to my degree and being able to continue what I was doing, which was aggravating. None, like, I, yeah, if you're someone who's very driven and has like a strong focus of where you want to be and when you want to be there, dropping out of school doesn't really um, sit well with you. Um, the reasons why I dropped out of school were mostly personal and because I just didn't feel like I was fitting right into the structure that I was in and I wanted to find a better structure. But yeah, I thought I could give you some advice before you apply because applying is expensive. It really is. And knowing where to apply is also really difficult and what to look for when you're applying. So I went over to Instagram and to Facebook and to YouTube and to all the platforms and I asked you, what are your questions? What do you want to know? So, without further ado, without me rambling on here forever, also, I brought in the very special mug that is a constant reminder of, yes, you did it. I need that reminder sometimes. All right, question number one. Do you think that the school defines how good you can become, or is that just a myth? That's a great question for several different reasons, but I will start off with this thing. You can get to anywhere that you want as long as you push yourself to get there. So no, school doesn't necessarily help you, but it really does give you the push. It doesn't mean that you won't work in the business, but the positive aspect of going to a school, and that's not just music school, but that's also like the difference between going to an Ivy League school or a community college. The opportunities that come from going to a major university are so much bigger because you have more connections and you meet more people and those places you pay for the service of having those future experiences. So yes, they're way more expensive and they're more difficult to get into because of what you get on the other side. It's not only about the education you're getting at that time, but also the idea of name is on your CV sometimes can really help. But that doesn't mean you cannot be a good singer and it does not define the type of singer you will become if you go to a different school or... I hope that made sense, but it's more the idea of what you get from going to school and not that it defines what kind of singer you will be. Would you mind talking a little bit about consultation lessons? Should one do them before auditioning? When to do them? What to look for in researching potential professors slash instructors, etc.? This is really important and um... When it comes to consultations, they can be extremely, like I'm a bit torn about when to do them. Should you do them? 100%. Make sure you use up all those consultation opportunities that you get because you learn so much from consultations. And if you only do a few or like do one with one specific teacher, then you're not really getting a general idea of all of the faculty at the school that you're going to. So I would definitely use those and try and get as much information as you can about all those teachers. Um, when it comes to to do them before or after you get in, I did several before I got into school. One, because I wanted to know if I was good enough to get into school. What I learned from this is that the person who's consulting you might really want to work with you, but that doesn't mean that they can dis make, they are the decision maker on the other side. So as much as it built up my motivation to go and audition to all these places and to try my best to get in, it didn't necessarily mean that those people could offer me a spot and therefore 
they couldn't tell me the truth. Like, even if they thought that I was really fantastic and I was the best singer they heard that day, it didn't really make a difference because they weren't as a decision makers in the faculty that was auditioning me that day. So yes, they're great because they pump you up before, but at the same time, if you don't get in, you get really mad. And um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I'll see if I can post that video here, but um, attach that video here, but there was time I went to an audition that I was told that I was going, that I was told at the consultation that I was going to do really well and that I, they definitely want to take me on. Um, and then at the audition, I wasn't given even a second round and then I got stuck in Iceland. So <laughs> maybe I'll, yeah, I'll link that video up here. But I think if you do them afterwards, you already have the security that you are going to that school and it's really good to see all the different faculty members you can potentially study with at that school and find out from as many of their students as possible, if you can, what their experiences were like with that person. Yes, this is very generalized and, and not every teacher is going to be right for every student, but if you get like a general consensus from a bunch of their students of how they worked with this person, you can also see like what they're like as a teacher. And um, yeah, I would, if you can do that, ask a lot, go for a singing consultation and look for how they work and how you feel after the lesson, not just before. Record, record all your lessons and it's the three lesson rule. So if you like the first lesson but you're not sure, you can go again. Also first lessons are a bit hard to tell if you work well with a person. Second lesson you should have more of an idea but if by the third lesson you're still doubting whether or not you're supposed to be with this person, cut it off. Like cut it, go. Don't continue more than three lessons with someone if you're not sure about them. It's a, it's a rocky road after that and you don't want to do that to yourself or to anyone else. <laughs> but three lessons and you're out. Did I answer that whole question? Hello, editing Avi from the future here. Um, something I completely forgot to mention is that um, consultations before your audition you have to pay for, but after your audition they are free or potentially free. I'm still very confused about whether the to do them before or after, but money is a factor, do them after. Ooh, that rhymed. Oh, and what to look for. I don't know, it's hard to say because it really depends on where you are at that moment vocally and like what you're doing, what you're doing vocally. Some people would need more of like a technique teacher and some people need more of like an interpretation teacher. So it really depends. I think talk to the teacher you're with now to find out where you need to go if you trust your teacher who you're, who you're with now. But find out from them where they see you going and then try and backtrack to what what need, what are the gaps that they can't fill anymore and need to be filled. I think that's the best way to do it. But it's a lot of, oh, consultations are... Finding, finding a teacher is the hardest thing in the musical industry. Okay, moving on to Royal Welsh versus Royal Academy of Music Masters in vocal performance. I'm stuck between the two. Regarding previous message, just general difference between Wales and England if you know anything about them, which also ties into another question, which is Royal College of Music or Royal Academy, which is more strict? So, um, I feel like these two questions are quite similar, but also, um, they are like specific in different ways, but the general rule is always the same. It is what you're looking for to get out of your degree. So the differences between Royal College and Royal Academy are very slight and I couldn't really pinpoint the specific differences. It's just the feelings that I got walking into the building. They are very similar, but they have different faculties. So different singing teachers in the departments. And if you find, if you get into both, I would go to consultations for both and get the vibes that you get from the teachers and from the atmosphere of the school and what works best for you. I, I think that's the best way to gauge it. Now versus Wales and London or England, um, it's, they're so different because what those two, what those two areas can offer are extremely different. But the difference is when you're in London, there's just everything is on, on hype because you're so close to everything. So you have the opera house is really close. You have so many concert halls really close and there are concert opportunities that you can 
really just apply and apply and apply for. But if you are a full-fledged, ready to go for your masters, you don't have that many technique issues, you are just there to like market yourself and learn how to perform and perform and perform and perform and perform and not really worry about the consequences. It's not really the consequences, there's just more happening around you and you have the ability to use that platform, then it's great. It really is. But if you're not there vocally yet and if you still need a bit more time and you want to use that time to really develop yourself as an artist, going to a smaller school that has less spotlights on it is better. 100%. So it's really where you are right now and what you want to do and how you can achieve it. But also, schools are really expensive to apply to and going to auditions is very expensive and everything about it is expensive. So if you have the ability to apply for both, I would apply for both and see what happens and then make your decision. But if you can't afford to apply to both, I don't know. I really wanted the London life. I didn't want to be in a small town. I had done the small town for most of my bachelors, but I think the um, the feelings that you get inside of a big city and the inspiration you get from this, your surroundings really crafts you as a musician. But that really depends on you as a person and what you need. I, that's what I would say. So if you can apply for both, apply for both. If you can't, speak to your teacher. Always speak to your teacher. <laughs> or your coach or someone that you like really trust their their ears and ask them what they feel like you're lacking and where they think you need to build on your strong suits and it build on and if it's more technique stuff I would definitely go to a smaller school where you have less pressure uh, and if it's more performance based stuff then and putting yourself out there and pushing yourself in that way I would go to a big school personally but that's my opinion all my opinion. This whole video is my opinion. Last question. Something for international students who want to study in England. Oh, so for international students in general, studying abroad can be very daunting and difficult and um, finances are not fun and visas are the least bit of fun. They take a lot out of you mentally and they're just, it's just, Oh, what I wouldn't give to not have to think about that. The things to remember as international students is you have to build trust with everyone around you. And that takes time. So if you're coming for a two year program, like a master's, there's a strong likelihood that that won't be enough time to solidify or like make an imprint on people and then remembering that you're not going anywhere if you're planning to stay and you will always have a lack of something because you're not from there. So if you are from somewhere, you just have a lot of easier access to opportunities just because people know you. It's not because you're not as good of a singer or um, you are not as whatever. It just means that they don't know you well enough to trust you and it's and it's going to be in whatever business you work. So when you're new to some place, you just have to give it time. One year, two years is not a lot of time for someone to say, Oh my God, I am going to put all my eggs in their basket and trust that they can do whatever they want and that they're going to stay here and that they're amazing musicians and I can rely on them. Those are all things that happen with time. So I would definitely say if you're thinking about studying abroad, Life in England is very traditional and traditions that we don't have from different countries. And remember that everything takes time and visas are the worst part and uh, everything's going to cost you a bit more money. What else can I say about being an international student? You have to stick to your guns and remember why you're here and what you want to get out of it. I think with all going, all things going to school, is what do you want to get out of it at the same you're paying for a service whether it's not like a business like you're used to paying for you know a new makeup or something but you are paying for a service and you have to know what you want to get out of it when i buy makeup i'm not buying it so i can look like kim kardashian no i'm looking i'm buying it in order so that i feel better about the way i look in front of the camera personally or i feel more put together the same thing goes for school what do i want to get out of my education. I wanted to get networking out of going to a big school. I wanted to 
get a degree in music. I wanted to be taken seriously in the music industry. And then I started a YouTube channel, so we'll see how that goes. And then, and I wanted performance opportunities. The performance opportunities were very difficult for me to get because I'm very new and I'm a new face and people don't know me as well. So then I've had to create those on my own and that's kind of more difficult to do, but you get a lot more out of it at the end. Yeah, I think that's all for international students and I think that's all from this video. Um, with that being said, if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments box below and I will try to answer all of them as best I can. And in the meantime, that's all folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that little notification bell so you can be notified when I make a new video. And if you would like to see more of me because YouTube just isn't enough, um, you can follow my completely free newsletter um, and subscribe to that, which is down below. Or if you want to support my work, check out my Patreon and support me there so that we can do this more often. And um, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think that's it. So have a great, 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 great week. Drink lots and lots of tea. Study hard. Do your diva studies. And watch an opera. Let me know what you want to see or chose to see. Use the hashtag diva studies and we'll find each other. I have to stop saying that. That always sounds really creepy.